大家好，我们这一集对话前国会议员 Bill， 世界观与中期选举分两个部分，第一个部分是中文概括和解读，第二个部分是英文访谈的部分剪辑。在下面的第一部分里面，我们有十点的概括和解读。第一点，比尔告知说，他对中期选举的结果并不意外。他认为他或许是美国为数不多的人持有这种的看法。他也很高兴，我们三十年来一直有这样的友谊和真诚的对话。第二点，他说两党选举之争其实是两个思想阵营的之争，核心的核心就是两种信仰和世界观之争，也就是说，到底有神还是没有神？这两者其实是水火不相容的。第三点，美国独立宣言里面相信的所有的人，不只是美国人，也包括中国人和世界上其他的人，都享有的天赋人权。这并不是反映在中期选举中真正的征战。第四点，真正的征战是到底谁是主宰，是上帝还是人？竞选政策、党派和选民是否反映了维护神人的关系，反映了神写在人心里面的律法？第五点，也就是说，人如果是主宰，人就要操控一切，就要控制和争夺权力，政府就会用超级超大的项目来压制、剥夺人的自由。第六点，例如在经济上。就会表现人政府对人民税收的政策。在比尔父亲的年代，每一块钱政府收税七分钱，而现在每赚一块钱就收税五毛钱。第七点，所以美国整个的国家和人民是越来越相信神、顺从神的意愿，并且以此来投票，还是向相反的方向？比尔暗示。情况并没有好转。第八点，比尔提醒，上帝的心意是要我们得着福音和救赎的人们进入他永远的国度，而地上的政府只是短暂的机构，这对我们是一个好消息。第九点，因为神设立的神人关系是在神设立的政府与人的关系之间。而神人关系超过一切，是最大的、最重要的。政府和投票只是要反映出保护这种的神人关系。最后第十点，比尔强调，神给我们的呼召不是拯救美国，而是要活出神救赎的神人关系。只有活出这样的救赎的神人关系，才可能拯救美国。而且拯救美国只是伴随的结果。愿上帝祝福大家，请大家继续来听第二部分英文的访谈。谢谢各位。We would like to hear from you. General impressions first. What What do you see? Help us to understand. What do you see in this midterm elections? Okay.、Uh, first of all, I I might. Be one of the only ones in the country that was not surprised. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I was, I was, I was, I was not surprised.、Um, the not surprised、uh, of what? Not surprised. not surprised that it turned out the way that it did.、Um, okay. And uh,、um, uh, and let me just say on the front end,、uh, you know, thank you, Jane. Our relationship over twenty five. We're start on our towards our thirty thirtieth year together. <laughs> We're going to have to reprogram what we usually say. We say twenty years to get. No, I think we're moving toward thirty years together, and it's been a blessing,、uh, you know, for you and I to to carry on this conversation from our our very first conversation when you came to meet me at the roller skating rink, and uh -huh. uh, 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 we shook hands, and、uh, you said you were、uh, Jane Zhu, and I said,、uh, "Hi, my name is Bill Worldview Redmond." And <laughs> so my middle name,、uh, but but the the uh, uh, and it's good that more 
Christians, whether they're Chinese or American or British or uh, African American, it, it does it doesn't matter. It's it's we we need to remember first we belong to God before we belong to anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's our primary relationship about our existence, that, you know, that, we, that we're human beings. Each one of us is made in the image and likeness of God. Uh, and uh, each one of us, in spite of his love for us, we still sin against him. Uh, but he provides the way to put us back together. And, and down deep inside, the law is written on all of our hearts. And, and we know, you know, we, we know when we violate you know, the law that he's written on our hearts and violate that relationship with him, but he still continues to reach out to us. And, and so when we understand that the world that we live in, that it is not as it was when he created it, that there's sin in the world now, and because of sin in the world, that, that he has ordained government as one of the institutions uh, marriage and family precede the existence of government. See, in the Garden of Eden, when he said, be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion, that, that, that uh, there were no governments. It was just Adam and Eve and God and Adam and Eve. And so there's, there, 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 the relationship was there, primary relationships between the man and his maker, the man and his mate, um, and, and, and sin had not entered the world. And, and um, you know, we don't see death in the world. We don't see crime in the world. That all of that comes as a result of, of the first sin. And, and so when I look at the world, uh, whether I look at America, whether I look at China, South America, I look at the past, I look at the present, I look at the future, that, that I understand that God is in control of all of this. That doesn't mean that he makes our decisions for us. And when we make decisions, he can work through those decisions or around those decisions and sometimes we're punished for our decisions. Sometimes we're rewarded for our decisions. And so it's those primary relationships that in that context is the presence of government. And C.S. Lewis used to say that we need to remember that the human being was created for eternity with God, but governments are only temporal. They're, they Governments are not eternal, and that's good news, see? Um, and, and so, uh, however, God ordains governments, but he outlines what, what governments are supposed to do. And the, the primary thing about government is to secure for the individual the things that come from the hand of God, such as the life of the human being, the freedom that he gave us because he created us like himself and he is free and he created us free. That, that is how we are supposed to be and that we pursue happiness. And that's basically our part in the dominion mandate in our generation and in our life. And that's to be fruitful and to multiply, you know, to have, you know, to understand this creation that God has made for us. And so whether it's astrophysics, whether it is medicine, whether it is education, whether it is construction of housing, whether it's the maintenance of sewers, it doesn't matter that the human, that we engage in ways that we're blessings for each other, okay? Mm -hmm. And together we're blessings for others. And that's part of the role of the church is that you and I, Jane, we have come together over the years so that others can be blessed outside our relationship. And many of the people that have been blessed by what you and I have done, we don't even know their names. But you and I, we came together to do something that honors God, that advances the good news that, 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 that Jesus, that, that he came in the flesh, God came in the flesh, that he died for our sins, he, he raised himself from the grave so that we can have power you know, uh, over life, that, that, that de or over death, that death is not the end of it. And because death is not the end of it, and that's the worst that can happen to me, um, guess what? I'm not concerned if 
if, if the elections don't go the way that I would like them to go. So I'm not depressed, number one. Um, number two is, is that we, we um, and, and, I, and basically one of the things that you, that you hinted towards is that part of the reason that America is in the situation that it is in is because it doesn't understand, you know, a worldview that there's that there's two houses that are in conflict with each other. Okay, mm -hmm. there's there is the, the the worldview that comes to us from the idea that God loves us, and it is it it is having battle with the worldview that says God doesn't exist and the government's in charge. And we're, we want to be a part of the government so we can have power and, and we got to have control. And, 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 and so, but I'm here to tell you that, that the government is not the final authority in our life, regardless of what happens, regardless of the generation that, you know, that we're, that we're born into, that, 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 that God is the most important thing in our life. And we need to do that on a daily basis. So America, that the founding of America is based primarily in, on I, the ideas that God exists. Now, I know you're going to have people that, that view this particular uh, conversation and they've not seen one of, they haven't seen you and I talk together like this before. Mm -hmm. And, and so, so I, I need to say this, you've heard this a thousand times from me. And I fa in fact, I remember when you and I did it first uh, on the, the whiteboard in the basement of the church over by the University of New Mexico, and you translate it as I put it on the whiteboard, and, and that is that the idea that launched America is the idea that we hold these truths to be self-evident, mm -hmm. that all men, not just, not just Americans, all human beings are made in the image and likeness of God, that, that all men are created equal, that they're endowed by their creator with certain, not questionable, these are certain rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the next statement says, and governments are instituted among men to secure the rights. So when you stop and you think at the parts of those, the purpose of government is to secure for you and me and for every other human being the rights that come to us from the hand of God, not the hand of government, but, but the right to life comes from the hand of God, not the government. The right to liberty comes from the hand of God, not the government. The right to pursue happiness, the, that means recognizing the gifts and the talents that God has given us, and we use those gifts and talents to glorify him in his creation. That's the, that's the original meaning of the, of the pursuit of happiness. And, well, how, you, uh, how, you well, can, how you translate this understanding to believe in helping the audience to understand the, you know, the current situation of the midterm, how that you are not surprised and how that we should prepare ourselves to see these kind of things, not surprised, not only that, but be prepared to do what we are supposed that, to do. Yes, yes, absolutely. We, we, put, we, we put shingles on our roof on the days that it's not raining. <laughs> that we prepare for what we know is going to come. Okay. And so, yes, we do, we do need to prepare. And, and so the conflict in America, the, 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 the two ideas are, are basically, there are some people that say God exists. He made us. He gave every one of us the right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And then there are others that say, Oh, no, no, God does not exist. Mm -hmm. that, that you do not have the right to life from God. We're the government. We determine what rights you have. And so the conflict is between two camps of people that hold two separate uh, ideas that they can, never, they can never be reconciled. They can mm -hmm. never be linked together. And, and, and part of what's going on in the churches is, is a movement towards what, what's referred to as social justice, where the ideas of Karl Marx 
that there is no God are linked to somehow or another can be linked to the idea that God exists um, and we could we can move on together and that's absolutely false. So 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 what what I'm saying is that the most important word in the American experiment that people forget the most important word is not life. The most important word is not liberty and the most important word is not pursuit of happiness. The most important word in American legal thought and American government thought, the most important thought is the idea of God. Because if you pull away the idea from God, the entire experiment collapse. And then we're into men pursuing men unjustly. We're looking at oppression. We're looking at concentration camps. You know, we're looking at huge government work projects such as the pyramids in, 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 uh, uh, in Egypt, you know, or the Great Wall in China. I mean, there, there's, there's huge public works projects that when the government comes in and they take control of the people, they press the people into, um, you know, into forced labor and, uh, uh, and, 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 you know, for the good of the government and for the good of what, or, you know, what the government thinks is important. Today, the forced labor comes uh, in America that, that the government, they will come and take more than 50% of what a human being makes to spend on the government projects that they want. So when I was a, a child, when I was born, my dad went to work and he made $1.00. Okay, and when he made when he made that dollar, um, you know, every dollar that he made, that ninety three cents he took home, seven cents went to the government, state, federal, local. Okay, and so my father had more freedom because he kept more of the money that he made with the labor and the gifts that God had given to him. Now you have people that in America that go to work every day and more than 50 cents goes towards taxes. And so the more you have, um, the less of a slave you are to the government. The, the more that the government takes from you, the more that you are moving into slavery. So, so American culture for the longest time is not going to see concentration camps or labor camps that we've seen in other forms of Marxism. But as America becomes more and more Marxist, you're going to see Americans owning less and less and having less uh, resources to, um, you know, for, they, for themselves and their family and for their communities that, that the government will come in and take that, you know, away. So, so the, the battle that we're in and last Tuesday is just the, um, the most recent battle of the war. Let me say that. <laughs>